Okay, we're back. And what I want to do now is do uh, a few things from the tools menu. If you go to tools, there's a fractal bot button. This is how you can save and load entire banks. It's not quite compatible yet in Axedit, this says. You have to go to a standalone, but one day it will be integrated so you can directly load it from this menu. If you click this, you will bring up your tuner into your Axe 8, and this turns it off. Now, you can get the exact same thing over here with this tuner button. So you can turn on your tuner and tune your guitar right here. Over here, you have a tempo function, and this is important. This will vary by presets, but you can tap the tempo like I'm doing right now, and notice this change from 120 to 106 beats per minute based on what I was doing. Okay, so you can use an individual tempo that is saved with the specific preset or if you have a global tempo across all your presets, you can pick it to do that. I always use the preset tempo and I'll show you why when we get into delays and setting up tap delays because they can vary by preset sounds and so that's how I do it. Over here, and this is really important to keep an eye on, is your CPU setting. How much CPU of the Axe 8 are you using? The more blocks you put in here, the more you're going to see that CPU grow. Like I just went from 19 to 30. If I add a reverb, what happens? It goes to 51. If I make my reverb a high quality reverb, now I'm at 60. Um, as you add different effects, this is going to go up and up. And what you're going to find is that at a certain point here, when you keep adding these really intensive blocks that do things that take up a lot of uh, processing space, for example, let's say a compressor here, a studio compressor, and then one more drive block. I'm at 82. Watch what's about to happen here. All right. Notice what just happened. It dropped because it turned the reverb off. That's what this is. It's saying, I don't have enough CPU to do all the things you want me to do. But there are things, little tricks you can do. For example, in reverb, always use the normal, and that will reduce it. Uh, drive blocks tend to use a lot of processing power, so maybe you want to use an X and a Y dry and, and instead of two different blocks, for example. For cab, you can go to a normal res, and that will actually reduce your CPU on a cab. Uh, so this is a place where there are little things you can do to save uh, processing. The key is you really don't want the CPU to be over 90%. That's a little bit about CPU, and that's important. There's some little buttons up here you know, to shrink your screen or make it bigger. Um, let's go through the bank and preset selector. So you've got a couple of ways of doing that. Um, this will tell you what firmware you're in. This is your bank selector. You can look at all of them if you want, all at once. Mines are totally full because I've got my Naked Amp Tone Packs in a lot of this. Um, but it's divided by um, four different bank sets of, of 16 groups of eight each. And that's what this grayed out is. So banks, banks one through 16, so you've got one one to one eight. Then you click to bank two and you've got blank two to two eight. Bank three, three to three eight, et cetera, et cetera. All the way up through each of these. So this is a way for you to switch through those. You can also search for a preset, for example. Um, you know, I've got a couple of really nice Eric Johnson presets. If I click EJ, it brings up just those three presets. So that's helpful in trying to find stuff if you're looking for specific ones and you know the names and you don't know where they are in the banks. Now you can also use this counter here to go through banks, nine, eight, seven, six, if you want to do it that way, up, up and down. So that's the bank number here. You can also enter it in manually, bring me to bank 12. And then this actually picks the preset from one to eight. That's how this works. So this is preset uh, four in bank 12, for example. Or, and this is just, I like to pick them this way. I just come in and grab it, you know. You know, there's my a nice preset. Um, so that's how you do that. Now, you have scenes over here. Let me show you from my Naked Amps Tone Pack a scene for the song Manic Depression, Manic D. 
This is what the preset looks like, and in the Axe effects, it's got two amps. In the Axe 8, that wouldn't work. So I've got a scene one here, and it's got a basic sound like this. When I hit scene two, notice that a drive block comes on, which happens to be a face fuzz, and a filter block comes on, which boosts the sound by 2.5 dB. So that's what scenes do. They let you change your block settings within a preset. Now, if you change from, if you just turn a block on or off, there won't be a hesitation between the two. Switching from X to Y in a scene change, sometimes there can be an audible gap. So just be aware of that, and you might want to construct your presets to avoid that. You've got up to eight scenes you can set for any preset. Now, if you right click on a preset, it gives you some options. You can copy the current preset, the current scene, and maybe paste that, say, into a different one. Um, took me a second to do that, but I could now paste that there. It takes a second. Or I could paste that maybe to all the scenes, which is kind of great when you get your first one, because what happens is, is the scenes automatically turn all the blocks on by themselves. This will bypass all the blocks, so they're all turned off, which is good. You could copy that into every scene and then just turn on the blocks you want, for example. You can swap scenes, so that's kind of a nice feature. So that's a little bit about how you can use that. Paste this to all ones, paste to a different one, swap it, bypass them. But remember, as the default, when you go to a scene, usually every block is turned on and you have to turn them off manually. So now we're going to do a segment on the block library, which is one of my favorite and most powerful parts of the X edit capability. So I really like this block library, and I'm going to show you why. The block library is where you can have a library of pre-made block settings that you can pull up, your favorite ones that you've dialed in in the past. For example, I want to put a, say, a clean boost before this particular amp preset. I can go into this little space down here called the block library. You can also get to it from here if you want. I tend to do it from down here. And I click on it and it opens up a screen. Now these will only be the blocks from my drive block. So just to show you, see, I've got this highlighted. If I do the block library from here, it's only gonna bring up my amp saved block libraries. If I go to my cab, it's only going to bring up my cab saved libraries. So the block library is specific to the block you're working with. So I emulated a nice Landau clean boost with a setting on about four. And you'll see that that's the micro boost drive block. The only drive's only about two here, even though it says that in the real life, the one was on four and a little bit here. But I AB'd this to make this the same for me. And I did a couple of little tweaks to it. So I now have this block, and when I pull this up, I no longer need my real pedal because I've A-B'd them and matched it, and I've saved this one as that. So now I've got this in there, and whenever I want to pull that block up, I've got it. Now, of course, I can still tweak it. I can still move things around. Notice that that literally stopped being white as soon as I did it because it knew that I had changed it. You can now uh, you can scroll through your block library this way and look at things. Again, it's a lot easier to just click on it. You also can save whatever you've created. You can rename one. If it's still white and lit up, you can rename it. Maybe I've got two or three of the same name, which I actually do. This is a way I could change that. You can delete the block altogether. You know what? I don't like this block setting, for example. And it'll also show you um, in whatever folder that you use. I use a Mac. You know, what your block library are and this is what they look like as actual file names notice they've got this information added to them so if you wanted to go in there and clean things up there's a way to do it that way you could delete things from there and then you can refresh your block library settings after you do that remember that from the earlier video and it'll go down and it'll read everything now up here is where you can enter in the preset name and you can type it, you can use lowercase or uppercase, you can use characters and symbols, you know. But what you want to do is, while it will take a long name and go out for a ways, the problem, of course, is that it's going to be a limit in terms of what will actually show up on the front of the screen of your Axe 8. So you want to pay attention to that and try and keep your name short 
and simple as best you can. Some people like to do things. If they've got an expression pedal hooked up, maybe they'll do E2, you know, W, meaning my expression pedal, wah, is the wah. Or they'll come up with little codes or things like that to let them know what sort of controllers might be attached to a specific preset. That's really all up to you. But you need to know that until you save it, just because you've entered it, it's not there. It looks like it's there right now. But if I leave this, until I hit save, it is not written into the preset. So I got to hit save, and now it's going to be preset name like that. And I can uh, go in here, and now it's there uh, like that. But if I had just come in here and said, Austin Buddy, and then I went to another preset, two, and then came back to three, guess what? It's not Austin Buddy because I didn't click save, so don't make that mistake. So let's pick back up with the block library. Um, again, you can go crazy in this, and I have. I've emulated a bunch of pedals. For any kind of effect that you have, you can do a block library. If you are getting block libraries from other folks, some websites have them, you have to put them into the proper folders for them to read and into your system. So these are just really cool tools for you. And I love this part of it more than anything because it's sort of like having a virtual pedal board that I can pull up any time or virtual drawer full of great old pedals that I can pull up any time and put into any kind of um, preset that I want to do.